This is by far one of the questions I get asked most by traders. And it is, Steven, if the daily chart is in an uptrend, then does that mean that I only need to look for buy trades on every other time frame? What if I see a perfect sell or shorting setup on a five minute chart? Can I not take it because the daily chart's in an uptrend? What if I see a swing trade? What if you swing trade and you look on the daily chart for your trend, it's in a downtrend. Can you buy on the one hour and four hour charts? The real question being, what do you do when different time frames are showing you different trends? And because I see so many traders with this issue, what I want to do today is share with you the three ways I personally deal with different time frames showing different trends. So if that's something you're struggling with, then make sure you go ahead and smash that like button for me to help out with the YouTube algorithm. If you're new, subscribe because we come out with content like this each and every week. And I would hate for you to miss it. If you're already subscribed, then you know what's coming. Let's go ahead and get into today's video. Before we start to talk about the three ways to deal with different time frames showing different trends, I first have to make sure you understand what a trending market is. So let's do that now. I'm gonna go up here to a whiteboard just to explain this really briefly. I have full videos on this and I will put a link in the top right hand corner of the screen for full videos on a trending market. That was not the right button. Okay, so a trending market is nothing more than a market that is showing higher highs and higher lows on a consistent basis this would be considered an uptrend. So in an uptrend, you would like to buy in order to jump on the trend of this current market. The opposite is true for a downtrend. We're making lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows. The confusing part most traders have, again, this is gonna be very brief, but the confusing part where most traders get lost is when something like this happens. And then they see a market that does this for a while, and then it may bounce up and then it bounces down and back up. So what you need to understand about a trending market is this market is still considered in an up trend until the previous pullback is broken. So if this from our new high, so here would be our high, here's our new higher high, where's the pullback after this new higher high? This would be the previous pullback. Now that we have a higher high here, where's the pullback? The pullback would be the lowest part of the pullback from this higher high down to the bottom of the pullback before the breaking close above this higher high. I know that looks really confusing when I'm just drawing this shit out. So what I'm gonna do is go down to an actual chart and show you this just briefly yet again. And then we're gonna talk about the three ways I deal with multiple time frames showing different trends. So here we are. I'm not cherry picking anything. This is literally just the chart of Euro dollar. And let's talk about it. So on the Euro dollar, if we are in this downtrend, let's use this area right here as a starting point. We have a starting point, we have a swing low. What we're looking at is to see when this swing low breaks. So that would be right here. Did the Euro dollar come up and close above this previous lower high with this pullback right here? This is the pullback. It did not close above that previous high. Therefore, whenever we push down into new lower lows, we then have to do what? Well, we just broke this level to create a new lower low. Now we look at the highest part of the previous pullback. This market is considered to be in a downtrend until this level is broken. So now we just move forward. I'll put my levels on here. This level is the level we need to break to show us we're in a possible reversal. Do we break it? Yes, we do right here. At the point that we break it, this is a, a problem a lot of traders have. At the point that we break this level, that doesn't mean we're necessarily in a newfound uptrend. That means we're in consolidation. That means this market is confused. And when I say market, I mean the overall participants in the Euro dollar at this exact moment, when we break above this level of structure, it's confusion, it's consolidation. They don't know what the value of the Euro dollar should be for sure. If they did and they knew the value of the Euro dollar should be lower, we would have made new lows before breaking this level. If they knew it should be higher, we would have broken this level of resistance directly afterwards and moved on into higher highs and what we consider to be an uptrend. So right now we're in consolidation until either this level of resistance breaks or until this level of support breaks and this level of support broke. So now we're back into a possible downtrend looking at this level now as our lower high. So we would have something like this. Lower high right here. We're looking for this level to break 
of support and create lower lows for this downtrend to be continuing. And we're currently in the midst of a pullback on the Euro dollar. So hopefully that brief lesson, four minutes or so there, was able to show you how we look for trending markets to the upside and the downside. This obviously on the Euro dollar was an example of a downtrend. So that's what we look for in terms of trend. Now that you understand what a trending market is, let's talk about a few ways that we can deal with markets showing different trends on different time frames because this will happen very often. It's very often that the market has a different trend on the one hour than it does on the daily chart, right? I'm sure you've seen that before. Let's talk about how to deal with it right now. <clears throat> the first way we're gonna deal with this is the most simple way and possibly not the most accurate, but definitely the easiest, and that is not looking at multiple time frames. So right now we're on the four hour chart. This chart is showing what? A downtrend. So if the four hour chart's on a downtrend, what we want to do is go short. We want to be selling this market because of the fact that we want to be involved with that underlying trend. So again, by far the easiest way to deal with this is just not to look at other time frames. And I know that sounds like something that wouldn't be accurate, but I actually have a few very accurate strategies that only use one time frame to determine trend. For example, you would look at your one time frame being in this case, the four hour, this applies to all time frames. does not matter which one you use, but in this case, it's the four hour chart, right? And on the four hour chart, you would ask yourself the first question, which is what is the trend of this market? Currently, we can tell that it's down because we have a low, followed by a lower high, followed by a lower low. Until this lower high is broken above, we're still in a downtrend. What I trade when looking at charts like this, there's two ways to trade trending markets and that's by breakouts and pullbacks. I don't normally trade breakouts when just looking at a single time frame because I want some more confirmation that the breakout's going to hold. So what I look for here in these situations on a single time frame is pullback trades. So the first question we ask, what trend is the market in? Down trend. The next question I like to ask is where are my areas of value? And if you're just trading using nothing but one time frame, one of the more accurate ways you can do that is by finding levels in the market after determining trend that will be trend continuation levels and levels that have been tested multiple times in the past. What I mean by that is find a level that has acted as support multiple times and then that level is likely to become resistance. Find levels the opposite that have been resistance or support multiple times in the past and then use that area as what we call an area of value and I personally label these in my own way. I call them O T. Z's. That stands for optimal trading zones. So if you're trading with one single time frame, your first step is to find the trend of that time frame and then find an area of value. Then you want to move on to entries and find a way to enter somewhere near that area of value to join in with the current trend of the market. So you'd be looking for reasons to sell the Euro dollar once we get into that area of value. And in doing so, you're just aligning yourself with everything you see. It's a very logical way to trade looking for a trend, looking for an area of value, looking for an entry reason to join that trend. So that's way number one that I deal with trends on multiple time frames is by not dealing with it at all and just using one time frame. Now let's talk about way number two to deal with different time frames showing different trends. Way number two is by doing what I call multiple time frame pullback trading. So in this case, we're on the four hour right now. If I'm on the four hour chart, what I want to align myself with is what I call a higher time frame trend. And I'm pretty sure that's what everybody calls it, right? So if I'm using four hour for trend, we all know I'm in a downtrend on the four hour, right? We've already discussed that. What I would do is use this time frame as my trend. And what you'll see when I go down to the one hour is the one hours in what looks to be an uptrend, right? If we use this here as our starting point, we've now created new higher lows, new higher highs, new higher lows, new higher highs, so on and so forth. We're in an uptrend on the hourly chart. But in the way of using these two time frames in my multiple time frame pullback trading, I don't care what trend my trading time frame is on. That's probably how I should have started this. When you're looking at multiple time frames, normally I look at two and what I'm looking for is my higher time frame to show me trend and areas of value. And then I'm looking for lower time frames to show me an entry. I do this for a lot of reasons. One of them is you can normally get better entries on lower time frames. Also, 
you can have smaller stops on those lower time frames to give you a better opportunity to get a big reward to risk ratio on a potential trade. So in this case, we were just on the four hour and the same thing applies as to what we just did, right? That single time frame we just discussed would be the same exact thing, except now I'm dropping to a lower time frame to enter the market. So on the four hour, I'm looking right now, I see the fact that we're in a downtrend on the four hour. I see the fact that we have an area of value right here. I'll color that red for an area of value that I want to go short in or sell at. With that being the case, I would drop down now one time frame from the four hour to the hourly. If I was looking on the hourly, I would say the hourly is in an uptrend. I would drop from the hourly to the 15 minute to look for long trades. If I was on the 15 minute, I would say, the market's in an uptrend on the 15 minute. I would look for my area of value on the 15 minute. It's right here. And I would look for long trades on a five minute chart. I'm just going through the different time frames. I know I'll probably still get questions, but I don't want you to be confused on how to do this or be like, oh, can I use this on different time frames too? And what time frame should I use? Drop down or go up one time frame to find your higher time frame and drop down one time frame to find your actual entries. Now I do one to two, but I'm just trying to keep this as not confusing as possible. So looking here, four hour time frame downtrend found my OTZ or area of value. I label it OTZ. What I would then do again is wait for this market to get into my area of value. Here we go. And instead of looking for trades on the four hour chart, by using something like a candlestick pattern or even a price action pattern on this chart to get a better entry, I would drop down to the one hour chart and regardless of what trend my trading time frame is in, I am still looking for short trades because I want to align myself with the higher time frame trend. So the second way to deal with different trends on different time frames is to align yourself with the higher time frame and then look for your trading entries on a lower time frame regardless of the trend so in this case on the one hour what kind of trades would i be looking for even though we're creating higher highs and higher lows on the one hour i would be looking for short trades because of the higher time frame trend so in this case let's push the market forward a little bit here oh and how right how would i be looking for those trades because this all is irrelevant if you just place random short trades because we're in an area of value, you have to have specific entry reasons. You all have probably seen videos if you've been a subscriber for a while. One of my favorite entry reasons in areas like this, it's no secret, is double tops and double bottoms. They work extremely well and I think they're looked over by way too many traders because they think they're too simple to still work. They still work at least for me. So, and they work really, really well still for me specifically. So let's go ahead and look here see what we get. Did we get any kind of double top? Not really, but we did get into our optimal trading zone or OTZ and have a nice fall out of this market. This is exactly what we're looking for. And you could go as aggressive as saying you look for a big momentum candle. You could go as conservative as saying, I look for a double top and the neckline to break and the retracement back up to the neckline and a candlestick pattern. That would be super conservative super conservative on your entry versus super aggressive. But the main point for this specific video is that the second way I deal with multiple time frames showing two different trends is by aligning myself with a higher time frame for possible pullback trades. Now, in the beginning, I said there's two ways to trade pullbacks. There are pullbacks. I mean, I said pullbacks. There are two ways to trade trending markets. If you're trading a downtrend, you can either trade the pullback of that downtrend and try to catch the top of the pullback or you can trade breakout trades and notice i have not talked about breakouts being entries yet that's because the third way that i like to deal with multiple time frames showing different or the same trends is by making sure that i have multiple time frames that align with trend and then look for breakout trades let me show you what i mean by that on a chart okay so what i mean when i'm saying i want to match trends on different time frames. Right now, I'm gonna do this with the one hour and the 15 minute. All this means is I wanna see a downtrend on my higher time frame. And in this case, that is what? The one hour chart. And I want to see a downtrend on my smaller time frame. If I'm using this as my higher time frame, then my smaller time frame would be the 15 minute chart. So with this being the case, what do I wanna see? I wanna see a downtrend on both. So right here, one hour chart, obvious downtrend. 15 minute chart, obvious downtrend. What I love to see in these situations is 
the possibility of a breakout trade during a time when two different time frames have the same exact trend. So right now, what I would be looking for using that type of multiple time frame analysis is this triangle to break out to the downside. And then I would be looking for either an aggressive way to enter that, which would just be the breakout itself, the breakout candle coming down, that would be the most aggressive way, or I would be looking to wait for this breakout, and then wait for a pullback to that area, looking for a candlestick pattern to push the market down even further or selling pressure of some kind in that area for a more conservative entry on a breakout pattern. So let's recap really quickly. The first way to deal with different time frames showing different trend is not to deal with it at all. Just to use one time frame for all of your analysis. My favorite way to trade when doing that is to find trend find an area of value and use selling or buying pressure based on candlestick or price action patterns in order to enter during those situations. The second way is by using what I call a multiple time frame pullback strategy where you're looking for the same thing on a higher time frame. You're looking for the trend and an area of value. The only difference is your entry is going to be on a lower time frame to give you a better entry that will hopefully give you smaller stops and a bigger reward to risk ratio on that specific target, on that specific trade. And the third way is by making sure the trend of two different time frames line up, something like the one hour and 15 minute, and trading possible breakout patterns because you're now aligning yourself with two different trends showing you massive momentum in a particular market and momentum is when you want to be trading breakouts, is when the market has momentum to a particular direction, whether that be up or down, down in the case of the Euro Canada we just looked at. And if you enjoyed this content and you're ready for some more advanced training, we actually just had some space open up in the EAP training program. I'll put some of the previous graduates' testimonials on the screen. If you're interested in that program, it's pretty much an entire course that takes you step by step from wherever you are to learning what you need to know to be a professional trader, including how to build a full trading plan based around some of the strategies that I use on a daily basis. It teaches you a lot about risk management and how to be a more disciplined trader. It also comes with three to five trade alerts per week, a video I do every Monday called Best Setups of the Week. It comes with the Pro Trader Report. It comes with what I call Priority Email, so that anytime you have questions about the course or about trading in general, uh, it will be me personally answering those questions for you. Best of all, it comes with a 60 day money back guarantee. So if for any, any reason at all that you're not satisfied over the course of 60 days, then just send my support staff an email and we will get you refunded ASAP. So it's kind of a risk-free offer. If you're interested, if you're not interested in that, that's totally fine too. Make sure you subscribe here so you don't miss out on any of our future content. Make sure that you go ahead and smash that like button for me. Comment below with anything that you're actually struggling with. I actually use those comments to come up with future ideas. That's exactly what I did with this video. And with that said, I'm gonna to talk to you guys in the next video. Trade green and I'll see you soon.